Dear children, in the last class you learned about excess demand and what are the reasons for excess demand and impact of excess demand. Now, we are going to learn about the deficient demand, just opposite of excess demand, deficient demand, the reasons for deficient demand, impact of deficient demand and how to correct the excess and deficient demand. Now, let us see what is this deficient demand. Deficient demand refers to a situation when aggregate demand is less than aggregate supply corresponding to the full employment level of income. In the last video, I told you what is meant by full employment level. The point where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply in the economy is known as the full employment level. Corresponding to that full employment level, if the aggregate demand is less than aggregate supply, we call it as deficient demand. So, how do we write aggregate demand less than aggregate supply, which means what the spending or the total expenditure of the people in the economy is less than what the producers in the economy are planning to supply. Now, let us understand this concept with the help of a diagram. In the diagram, I have marked aggregate demand on the y-axis, income or output or employment is marked on the y-axis because all these three terms means the same, income or employment or output is marked on the x-axis. Now, you all know that the 45 degree line is the aggregate supply curve. Now, the initial aggregate demand curve is AD. This is the initial aggregate demand curve and it starts from the y-axis and you know what is the reason why it starts from y-axis because of the autonomous consumption. Now, this aggregate demand curve intersect the aggregate supply curve at point E. This point E is known as full employment equilibrium level. The initial aggregate demand curve when it intersect with the aggregate supply curve, that particular point is known as the full employment equilibrium level. So, point E is the full employment equilibrium level. Now, when the aggregate demand is less than the aggregate supply, that is known as deficient demand. So, when the aggregate demand is less than the aggregate supply, what happens to the aggregate demand curve? It will be shifting downwards that downward shift of the aggregate demand curve. If it is excess demand, it will shift upwards. So, if it is a deficient demand, it has to shift downwards. So, the new aggregate demand curve which is represented by a dotted line is AD1. This new aggregate demand curve intersect the existing aggregate supply curve. Here, you have to make a note is Aggregate supply curve remains to be constant. It is not changing. What is changing here? Aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is falling. So, when the aggregate demand is less than the aggregate supply, it means the aggregate demand curve is shifting to the downwards and the dotted line is AD1. That dotted line of aggregate demand curve AD1 is intersecting the existing aggregate supply curve. This is the existing aggregate supply curve. This is the new aggregate demand curve. It is intersecting at point E1. So, here aggregate demand is less than the aggregate supply and that point is also an equilibrium point because the new aggregate demand curve, the the one which has shifted downwards, that aggregate demand curve is also intersecting the existing aggregate supply curve. So, that is also an equilibrium point. That equilibrium point is known as underemployment equilibrium. You have learned this concept, underemployment equilibrium, full employment equilibrium and over full employment equilibrium. So, I hope these two concepts are clear to you, full employment equilibrium and underemployment equilibrium. So, even when the aggregate demand curve is shifting downwards due to its shortfall, it is intersecting with the existing aggregate supply curve and there an equilibrium is maintained. That equilibrium point is known as underemployment equilibrium. Now, the point that we have to learn is what is a deficient demand. So, what is a deficient demand? A deficient demand is a situation where aggregate demand is less than aggregate supply corresponding to the full employment level. That is what we have to learn. So, 
from the diagram it is clear an aggregate demand uh, deficient demand refers to situation where the aggregate demand is less than the aggregate supply corresponding to the full employment level this is the full employment level right so a deficient demand is a situation where aggregate demand is less than the aggregate supply corresponding to the full employment level so here you can find aggregate demand is less so this shortfall of aggregate demand corresponding to the full employment level so this area is known as the deficient demand so once again this is the point of uh, this point equilibrium E is known as the full employment equilibrium. So here you can find corresponding to this full employment equilibrium corresponding to this full employment equilibrium you can find there is a shortfall of aggregate demand curve by the amount of ES by the amount of this is E and there is a shortfall of ES that particular gap is known as deficient demand or deflationary gap deflationary gap so deficient demand is also known as deflationary gap so the gap between e and s so corresponding to this equilibrium point full employment level there is a shortfall of aggregate demand by the level es that is known as deflationary gap so that deflationary gap is also known as deficient demand so once again what is the definition of deficient demand deficient demand is a situation where aggregate demand is less than the aggregate supply at corresponding to the full employment level okay now we will move on to the next part what is the reason for the deficient demand what are the reasons for the deficient demand what are the reasons for deficient demand point number one decrease in the propensity to consume what is meant by propensity to consume when the income increases consumption also increases so when the propensity to consume is less when the temptation or when the uh, increase in the consumption is less we can say there is deficient demand only when the consumption increases along with the income there will be excess demand so when the propensity to consume is less we can say there is deficient demand because when the propensity to consume is less it means what people's spending is less total expenditure is less aggregate demand is less so when aggregate demand is less than the aggregate supply what do we call we call it as deficient demand now next is increase in the tax when the government is increasing the tax what will happen people have to spend more amount of money than before to pay the tax so normally their purchasing power will become less so when the purchasing power of the people becomes less it means what their consumption is getting less total expenditure is getting less on goods and services so when total expenditure is getting less it means what aggregate demand is falling when aggregate demand is falling it means there is a deficient demand or deflationary gap now the next one is decrease in the government expenditure government is not spending anything in the economy like construction of roads railways bridges nothing is being spent by the government so there is no demand for goods and services by the government and people are also not earning the income due to the less employment level so what happens the demand for the people in the economy for the goods and services along with the government also decreases so when that decreases it means what people are planning to buy less aggregate demand is less when aggregate demand is less it causes for deflationary gap or deficient demand so just opposite of what all we discussed in excess demand is applicable to deficient demand so just think opposite of all the points we have discussed in excess demand now the next point is fall in the investment if the investment level in the economy is less we can find all over the production process also will become less so when the investment level is less in the economy the aggregate demand also will be falling in the economy so when there is more and more investment then the aggregate demand will increase when the investment falls the aggregate demand will also fall which causes for the deflationary gap 
Next comes the rise in the import. Imports are rising. When imports are rising, what will happen? The demand for the domestic products will decrease. People will be buying more of imports. The demand for the domestic product decreases. When the demand for the domestic products decreases, it means what? Aggregate demand is less than aggregate supply. When aggregate demand is less than aggregate supply, it means what? Deflationary gap or deficient demand. Next one is fall in exports due to higher price of the domestic goods. If the price of our goods are very high, other countries may not be attractive to buy our products. So there will be fall in the exports. So if there is a fall in the exports, you know, inflow of the foreign exchange also will be less. So there will be less money supply. So when there is less money supply, we can term it as deflation. Decrease in the money supply causes for deflation or deflationary gap. You know, increase in the money supply, excess demand is inflationary gap. Likewise, when there is a decrease Decrease in the flow of foreign exchange due to a fall in the export, there will be decrease in the money supply that leads to deflationary gap or deficient demand. So I hope it is clear to you reasons for the deficient demand, decrease in the propensity to consume, increase in the tax, decrease in the government expenditure, fall in the investment, rise in the imports and fall in the exports. Now we will move on to the next topic that is impact of deficient demand. What happens if there is a deficient demand in the economy? Point number one, effect on the output. What happens to the output of the economy? Due to the deficient demand, there will be an increase in the inventory stock. This particular term is very important. Why if there is no demand in the economy, if the aggregate spending is less, if what the people are planning to buy in the economy, that is what is known as aggregate demand, right? So whatever the uh, economy or the consumers are planning to buy in the economy is less, what will happen? Whatever the producers have produced, it will remain as an inventory stock. The produced goods has to move. If it has to move, there should be aggregate demand. If the people doesn't have the demand in the economy, if there is a less aggregate demand in the economy, what will happen? The produced goods will have an inventory stock. So I will read out the sentence once again. Due to the deficient demand, there will be an increase in the inventory stock. The next point, deficient demand causes involuntary unemployment there will be unemployment level in the economy people cannot find the job because there is no employment so what happens if there is no employment of resources people will be left unemployment they won't be able to find out a job so deficient demand also causes for the uh, the process of involuntary unemployment only if there is aggregate demand there will be more employment of resources. If there is no aggregate demand, employment of resources will be less. As a result, it causes for involuntary unemployment. Next is effect on general price level. So normally, when we think about inflation, what comes to your mind? Increase in the money supply. So deflation means what? A decrease in the money supply. When there is an increase in the money supply due to excess demand, we call it as inflation, right? Once again, I am repeating the point. When there is an increase in the money supply, there is inflation. So when there is inflation, normally what you think? Rise in the price. Right? So when there is deflation, what will happen? There will be decrease in the money supply and fall in the price level. So that is what I have written. Effect on general price level. General price level falls due to the lack of demand. So just think in this way. Increase in the money supply, inflation. So during that time, rise in the price. So decrease in the money supply, deflation. So fall in the price. So general price level will be falling due to the deflationary gap or during the period of deficient demand. So just opposite of what we have learned for excess demand that we need to apply for deficient demand. So once again during inflation or excess demand increase in the money supply rise in the price. During the deficient demand deflationary gap decrease in the money supply fall in the price level. Okay. Now, 
we will move on to the next topic measures to correct excess demand and deficient demand both excess demand as well as deficient demand is not good for economy it has to be recovered isn't it therefore measures to be taken to control the excess demand and deficient demand now who has a responsibility to correct the excess demand and deficient and deficient demand definitely it is for the government and rbi so government and rbi together take measures to correct the excess demand and deficient demand now let us see what are the measures taken by the government and rbi now measures taken by the government government measures are taken by the government and they are known by the name fiscal measures monetary measures are taken by rbi okay so both the government as well as rbi takes measures to control excess demand and deficient demand now government measures are taken by the government monetary measures are taken by the rbi government measures are known by the name fiscal policy or fiscal measures f i s c a l and the monetary measures are taken by the rbi so it is the sole responsibility of the rbi and the government to correct the deficient and excess demand in the economy so government measures are known as fiscal measures rbi measures are known as monetary measures now let us see what are the government measures government measures include change in the expenditure and change in the tax tax gives revenue for the government when government spend it is an expenditure expenditure and the revenue of the government you have learned it in the government budget right government expenditure means what the spending of the government tax means what revenue for the government so change the expenditure structure and tax structure that is what government can do to control excess demand and deficient demand now let us see what has to be done during excess demand during excess demand demand is already high there is inflation in the economy there is high money supply there is a rise in the price what has to be done by the government bring those down so for that what government has to do government has to reduce the expenditure whatever government is spending put a limit for all the spending reduce that spending therefore there will be decrease in the slowly that increase of the money supply will come down and government should increase the tax when the government increases the tax what will happen to the purchasing power of the people purchasing power of the people will be reduced when purchasing power of the people reduces what will happen the aggregate demand will start falling down here you know when there is excess demand what is actually happening here ad is greater than as that ad has to be brought down to bring down ad the spending of the people has to be brought down for the spending to be brought down what has to be done by the government increase the tax therefore their purchasing power will come down as a result aggregate demand also comes down that is what government has to do so during the excess demand reduce the expenditure and increase the tax now next is deficient demand during deficient demand what has to be done by the government increase the expenditure and reduce the tax increase the expenditure already economy is down so bring up the economy by increasing the investment of the government so when government increases the expenditure by constructing more and more roads railways bridges government demands for more goods and services because you know for constructing all these government needs goods and services people has to be recruited for doing the job they also will get income slowly their purchasing power also starts increasing so government has to boost up the economy so increase the expenditure and what one more thing is there reduce the tax when the government reduces the tax what will happen now you know what is uh, what is the situation during the deficient demand aggregate demand is less than aggregate supply so government has to bring up this aggregate demand to bring up the aggregate demand what the government has to do reduce the tax 
when the tax is reduced what will happen the purchasing power of the people increases they will try to buy more they are planning to buy increases when they are planning to buy increases aggregate demand will automatically increase so from the bottom level aggregate demand can be pushed up so the problem of deficient demand can be solved this is how the government can solve the problem of excess demand and deficient demand using the two measures that is change in the expenditure and change in the tax structure so once again during the excess demand reduce the expenditure increase the tax during the deficient demand increase the expenditure and reduce the tax now we can move on to the next measure monetary measure monetary measure is taken by rbi reserve bank of india and this topic is the same repetition of what we have learned in money and banking so for keynesian economics you can apply the same measures as we have learned in mon money and banking now monetary measures of rbi includes quantitative and qualitative measures which all are the quantitative measures you are familiar with bank rate repo rate cash reserve ratio crr slr statutory liquidity ratio and open market operation a detailed discussion of all these concepts are given in the chapter money and banking you can refer to the chapter money and banking for this explanation the same explanation can be written for the keynesian economics then the qualitative measures consist of margin requirement moral suasion and credit rationing the credit rationing means advice by the rbi to the commercial banks not to give loans for certain sectors during the time of inflation okay so this is the advice given by the uh, uh, rbi to the commercial banks not to give loans to certain sectors it is almost similar to that of moral suasion okay so these are the quantitative and qualitative measures so you can refer to the chapter money and banking what has to be done with bank rate repo rate crr slr and open market operation during excess demand and deficient demand during inflation and deflation and what has to be done with the qualitative measures like margin requirement moral suasion and credit rationing during the inflation and during the deflation that's all about this chapter we have come to an end of this uh, this chapter so work out all the exercise given in sandeep gar textbook i hope it is clear to you thank you